What is up heroes, it's Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon the Trading Card Game for the Game Boy Color. In the last episode, we finished up uh, collecting all the medals and headed our way to... What was it called again? The Challenge Hall? So I'm basically the Elite Four of this game, and we started off by going up against, or well at least getting into the battle up against Courtney, who is the owner of the Legendary Moltres deck. And I'm going to be frank with you guys right now, it's been a little bit since my last recording, so I might be a little bit wishy-washy on some of the mechanics and stuff for the, the deck building. I did review my deck and everything, so I'm hoping for the best. Hopefully we don't have to go through all four trainers with this particular deck, because we did build this deck in order to counter a potential fire deck, a Moltres Center deck, something like that, but regardless, let's get into this. I'm excited to hear what the Grandmaster battle theme is. Oh, this is hype. Oh man, the hype is real. Alright, what do we want to start with? Oh, we got a, we got a double colorless energy to start off with. We have a Psyduck in the back we can build up. I'm going to start off right with this Tauros. Ooh, this is intense. The tension is so real in this song. It's not like overly hype where it's like just pumping a ton of like energy through your veins. It's just kind of like there's a lot on the line, you know, like. Alright, so let's hope let's hope we can pull through here. Oh, and so Growlithe. Alright, so we did have probably a good idea with regards to whether or not this is a um like a fire based deck. So we're gonna start off by throwing the double colorless energy on our Toro so we can just stomp right away. Again, this is going to be a consistent 3 at KO, potential 2 at KO, um, but actually it's not going to be a 2 at KO anymore. No matter what, now it's going to be two more turns before we KO this. So it can go for Flare, which is doing a decent amount of damage. Worst case scenario, we could Rampage, but we should be in for all intents and purposes. Let me let me check his card to see. I think he has Flamethrower as well. No, just Flare. So for the time being, we don't really need to worry too much. I don't feel like there's an incoming, like, imminent threat that I need to go for Rampage against. So, for the time being, that's okay. I'm going to throw Water Energy on Psyduck, because I believe Psyduck uses that for various attacks. And <clears throat> we don't get the plus 10. Again, at this point, it doesn't matter. We need to get two plus 10s in a row if we wanted to get to a KO anyways, which is unlikely, so not the end of the world. And it doesn't evolve into Arcanine this turn, so this Growlithe is going to be dead next turn. Which is good, and hopefully whatever's in the back can't do enough to do 20 damage, and then we can go for Rampage the next turn, get one last big hit off with our Tauros. At least that's the plan. Um, let me check my Pokemon. Fury Swipes. Okay, so that's all we really need for the time being. Yeah, so that's all we need for the time being. So what I'm actually going to do is save this energy for the time being. See what we want to do. We, we probably need a couple more basic Pokemon, to be honest. And then I'm just going to stomp. Because I don't know if I want to throw... Because I don't know, based on what he could potentially play, whether or not he's going to be able to knock out our Tauros next turn. And if I do want to go for Rampage, that's um, something I can attach an energy to Tauros next turn to do. So, what's this attack? Confuse Ray! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, at least we don't become confused. So, we'll be able to potentially... Yeah, we could probably Oko this um, with a Rampage, so that's what I'm going to go for this turn. We got two fighting energies, and we have a water energy. We have a lot of water energies in this deck. That said, I don't have as many fighting Pokemon that would actually use this fighting energy, so I think it's safer to say we can go and attach that to Taurus for the time being, and we can go for Rampage. This will definitely knock it out, and yeah, at this point... Oh, we don't even become confused, which is really nice. 70 damage. Big damage. Does he have any other Pokemon? He's got a Vulpix. Or, she's got a Vulpix. Sorry. Um, any energies to attach? Moltres is on the bench. When you put Moltres into play during your turn, put from one to four fire energy cards from your deck into your hand. Oh, that's good. That's good. Whoa, and that's a really cool animation, actually. One, two, three. So she's probably going to take four fire energies from her deck. The way it looked, though, it looked like Vulpix needed two energy cards in order to actually go for Confuse Ray. So we actually have a 50% chance of getting a Rampage off this turn and knocking it out, um, which is really good in my opinion. And then we'll have a potentially... Ooh, should I look for Golduck in the back? <clears throat> should I look for Golduck? I, I forget exactly how good Golduck is. I kind of want to, though. I kind of want to take the time to do that. <clears throat> what would I give up? Probably Blastoise and Raticate. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go for the computer search and see 
if there's something in the back that we want to use more so than anything else. Let, let's take a look at Golduck real quick. Oh, I don't think I can check the card, though. I guess at the very worst we can see if Golduck is one of our prize cards. And it isn't. Okay, so we have Golduck, we have... Oh, do we not have a starter? Okay, I'm gonna go with Golduck. I think Golduck is our best play here. Let's see here. Psy Shock and Hyper Beam. And Hyper Beam is gonna be an elemental cost of... Or a water element attack, so... And it'll be really helpful against something like Moltres, which just builds up a bunch of energies. So... I do like the idea of having Golduck. What else might we want? What else might we want? We could get with Staryu and Starmie. We could go with our own Articuno, of course. It also tells me that Lapras is one of our prize cards, I think. Three water energies for something to freeze dry. Four energies for Blizzard. Hmm. I think for the time being I'm going to go with... Hmm. We have two or more water energies. I think it'll just be safer to go with Golduck because I can't necessarily rely on getting some more of these water energies. So I'm just going to do that. And what we'll do is we'll play Golduck on Psyduck. We'll attach a water energy to it. <clears throat> and that way, next turn, this thing will be good to go. It'll be able to use Hyper Beam, which is the ideal at this point. The question is, do I switch into that right now? Can I if I'm confused? Oh, wait, I don't think I'm even confused. Do I switch into Golduck right now? Let me check my opponent's play area. He's got two Pokemon on the bench, Moltres, Dive Bomb. It requires three Fire Energies in order to go for Dive Bomb. Man, that's scary. Um, and it does 70 damage. That's going to straight up Oko. Oh, it's a 50% chance then to Oko our Golduck. Hmm, do I go for Rampage? I don't know. I could get a really strong hit off with our Golduck. Actually, no, I do want to switch into Golduck right now. I've got a discard and energy card. That's not too big of a deal, to be honest. Because this Vulpix isn't going to be doing anything to us. Oh, wait a minute, I hit the wrong button. Oh, wait a minute, I have to discard two energy cards? Oh, that's my bad. Ugh, oh, sorry, just trying to think of the best play. The thing is, if I have Golduck in against Moltres, as long as it only has two, one fire energy, so it'll be like assigning its second fire energy on that turn, I can go for Hyper Beam the next turn and prevent it from ever getting to be able to use Dive Bomb, which is really cool. So that's why I wanted to have it in this particular turn. Okay, I'm just going to use Switch then and uh, send in Golduck. Oh, I won't even be able to knock it out this turn, I don't think. That might have been silly. That might have been really silly now that I think about it. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I already played an energy card. Okay, that was probably very silly. That was probably very silly. Hopefully... Actually, no, she's got a fire energy card. Oh, and she attaches to Vulpix, though. Okay, so this will still work out. She'll only have one fire energy on Moltres when it comes in. And for the time being, I can attach one of my miscellaneous fighting energies to Golduck. Because I think it makes the most sense right now. And we can go for Hyper Beam and prevent this thing from actually doing anything. Because next turn it won't be able to have enough Fire Energies to actually go for Confuse Ray. Yeah, I think that's the play here. Okay, and this should do 40 damage. Nice. I hope... Oh, use Switch. Just straight up Switch. This is okay though, this is okay though, and this is exactly the situation I wanted, because now every single turn I go for Hyper Beam, do 40 damage, and what's even more important though, is that I can actually take one of his energy cards away and prevent this Moltres from ever getting to be able to use Dive Bomb, which would straight up O-Kill me. So, that's gonna be the play. We'll keep getting rid of these fire energies on this Moltres, this Moltres is gonna be doing nothing to us. Wait, why did it do 20 damage? Does Moltres not have a weakness to water? What? Is it weak to lightning? It's got another, she's got another Moltres, oh my goodness. But yeah, see how this is at least working to the point where, like, it'll never actually be able to go for a dive bomb, which is really nice. I'll throw Hitmon top on, the, or Hitmonchan on the bench. Let me check Starmies, and can go for Recover and Star Freeze. I'll play it for the time being, actually no, I'll, I'll hold off. I'll play another Water Energy on Staryu, so that if I do get another Energy card, I'll be able to evolve into Starmie and be good to go with that. But for the time being, I wouldn't be able to do anything as... Star me, except for recover if I don't get another energy, so I'm not gonna not gonna go with that. 
Hopefully, she keeps trying... Pokemon Trader. Trade one of the basic Pokemon or Evolution cards in your hand for one of the basic Pokemon or Evolution cards from your deck. So, returned Magmar and got another Moltres. Oh my goodness. That said, both all these Moltres require a lot of energies, and as long as she tries to build up the Moltres that's in play at any given time, as opposed to a Moltres just hiding in the back, um, we'll be able to kind of stall her out and prevent her from actually getting the chance to go for anything. Okay, so now because we do have a double colorless energy, I am going to play Starmie on Staryu, so worst case scenario, we will be able to go for something. It's not worth it for me to actually play that double colorless energy because we don't need to have Starmie ready to go just this turn, and I don't want to necessarily waste the double colorless energy when I do have, you know, a Tauros and a Scyther in the back and everything. And yeah, she keeps attaching fire energies to this. At this rate, we're going to be able to take down all of her Moltreses with this, which is really good. If we get another Water Energy or something like that, that would be nice. And there's the Scyther I was talking about. We'll throw a Scyther on the bench, and we'll throw a Double Colorless on that Scyther, so that that Scyther is getting ready to go, depending on, you know, the situation. I am curious about this Moltres. What is its weakness? It doesn't have a weakness. Oh, that's comforting. Um, this one can go for Wildfire. What does this do? Hmm, oh, so Wildfire just discards my cards, but again, he needs, or she needs four Fire Energies on this to actually do any work, so I think for the time being, Golduck is going to put in all of the work right now, because we just keep taking away the Fire Energies from this Moltres, and next turn this Moltres is going to go down. Energy removal, oh, that's annoying. Um, luckily, I saved the Water Energy in my hand, though, so we will be able to still use it. Um, this Golduck, and prevent it from actually going for like one last attempt at a dive bomb, get one last final kill off, which would be really annoying. So what we'll do is we'll Hyper Beam here, and knock out the Moltres. She didn't even attach a Fire Energy that turn. Does she not have Fire Energies? She should be able to use them, um, especially because of the Pokemon power on this Moltres. If there are more Fire Energies in the deck, they should be coming up. Interesting. Alright, so do I want to use maintenance? I'm probably going to attach a water energy to something. Probably to Starmie because I already got rid of the um, the Blastoise. And then I can just go for Professor Oak here to potentially get more cards, see what I have available to me, whether I get a Defender, a Plus Power, all that sort of thing. Meow, Squirtle, Wartortle, nice. And we got our Articuno, that's good. And we got a Defender too, nice. Oh, there's no space on the bench. Okay, so... We're alright for the time being. Not too worried. We will just keep going for Hyper Beam. I think that's just what makes the most sense right now. I've got another Water Energy in case she does end up getting an Energy Removal or something like that. Last, you and your opponent show each other your hands, then shuffle all your trainer cards from your decks into your hands. Oh. So she's got a Ninetales, an Arcanine, a Growlithe, and another Lass. Okay. Um... Ninetales is scary. This is the one that like flips eight coins, I think. Yeah, so that's pretty scary, but at the end of the day, I mean, she knows I have an Articuno, which is pretty cool, but I don't think a computer will gain much knowledge from using a card like Lass, so that's kind of interesting. We'll use Bill, because I think it always, almost always makes sense to do so. we got plenty more water energies. I can start throwing those on Squirtle, which I can then evolve into War Turtle. Let me, let me check on this War Turtle real quick. Yeah, that seems like really good. It's got, you know, base 40 attack um, and bite, so I'll level that up. And we're, we're doing pretty good. It seems like Courtney is running out of fire energies and doesn't have anything to attach to these Moltreses that she has. And, like, I guess that's the that's the gamble that you have with, you know, these really powerful cards. Uh, these Moltres that can do so much damage but require so much energy in order to do so. Yeah, because now she's just a sitting duck. Just uh, just waiting around for my Golduck to take it down. This would be a lot faster, this would be a lot easier if I could just, if I had, or if Moltres were actually weak to water, like it probably should be, to be honest. Um, I don't want to necessarily waste all of my water energies, but for the time being, I think I'm going to throw my fighting energy on Hitmonchan. Uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll throw it on Scyther. It makes sense to use Scyther more so than Hitmonchan in this case. And if anything on my team dies, I'd like to have Water Energies around for Articuno. That said, at this point, I should still have anywhere from 5 to 10 left in my deck. So, 
Also, this Moltres, I want to check... Oh, it starts attaching energies to the Growlithe, so she's pretty much given up on this Moltres for the time being. I want to check the Moltres' retreat cost. It's two energies, so this Moltres is dead at this point. There's there's no going back for this Moltres. So I want to attach, I'll attach a water to War Turtle, so that's all good to go. So we've got a couple Pokemon. We've got this Tauros in the back that can go for Rampage, a really strong Rampage. Probably just knock, or just Oko anything. And we have a War Turtle in the back, which is really strong. We have... Scyther that's ready to go. I honestly I think this is a wrap. Um, I don't I don't see, see anything that she can actually do to to take this match back. I'll attach another water to Golduck in case she has another energy removal that she ends up with. And other than that, I'll keep saving my water energies for potentially Articuno on the bench. But that's really kind of all there is, especially given that she added another Moltres. Yep, there's the energy removal. Oh, and she took one from Tauros. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe my putting a Water-type energy on this Golduck actually discouraged her from going for the energy removal on my Golduck. But yeah, as long as she keeps playing these Moltreses and not her other cards... I mean, it, I think she's building up this Arcanine in the back, and I think I think that's her only hope, is that she can go for a really strong Flamethrower with Arcanine to get rid of this Golduck. But yeah, she's throwing in these Moltreses, which she can't really retreat and can't do any damage unless they have four energies or so. And if that's the case, I mean, they're not going to get there unless you can play more than one energy per turn, which is really difficult to do um, because I've got this Golduck just hyper beaming. Yep, there's the Arcanine in the back. Not like she can switch it out unless she has a switch card. And at this point, there's only one more Pokemon I need to take out. So worst case scenario, my Golduck dies and I go into Tauros and click Rampage. And that's going to do, what, 70-ish damage? Which is just really strong. We get our Lapras too, so in comes the Arcanine. I think it requires three to be able to use Flamethrower. Oh, and Ninetales in the back too, that's pretty scary. Yeah, I want to check out this Arcanine, see what attacks it has available to it, just to be safe. It's got a three energy retreat cost, so this thing is stuck in here. And unless it gets a double colorless energy, actually no. He, she's got to be able to play more than one fire energy per turn, because every single time I go for Hyper Beam from here on out, I'm going to take away one of those fire energies. So. In order to have two fire energies and three energies in total, she's going to have to play a double colorless and then a fire energy each turn. I don't know. I don't know how she's going to be able to do it. I think this is going to be a wrap. Because my Hyper Beam is going to... Yeah, there's no way she's ever going to be able to attack with this Arcanine because she sent it in a bit too prematurely. And... Yeah, Courtney, the first Grandmaster, not really... Not really proven to do too much. She even removed... Wow, oh, and she's only got a Moltres in the back, too. So it's not like she even has a Switch card to be able to switch out that um, Arcanine for something like Ninetales or another Moltres in particular. So I'm just going to keep attacking with Hyper Beam. There's no way this Arcanine is going to be able to retreat because of the number of... or attack because of the number of energies it has. In two, in two turns, it's going to die. It's going to die. Wow, so, so basically, <laughs> this match in a nutshell... Toro starts to pave the way, and then Golduck comes in and just clean sweeps Grandmaster Courtney and this legendary Moltres deck, which has really just been more of a pushover deck. Man, Golduck of all things. I knew Hyper Beam was a good move. When I, the first time I go up against Hyper Beam, I was like, whoa, that's really good. And then, of course, you know, if you can't beat him, join him. So here we are. We'll go for Hyper Beam and finish off Arcanine, and that should be the first Grandmaster down. Yeah, that's the last prize card. Alright, you won the duel with Corny. Now we get to find out if we have to do this all in one consecutive run. Hmm, <laughs> I lose. But that's no surprise, seeing as how you've come this far. Your next opponent is waiting for you. Very good, Nick. Your second opponent is Steve. Oh no, I'm gonna... I actually am gonna have to do... Oh no. I, Thunder Steve, am your next opponent. Hey, do you want a legendary Pokemon cards? Then you must defeat me first. Oh no. Oh no, guys, we're gonna have to do all four of these in a row. Is your deck ready, Nick? Prepare for the duel. Yes. Yes, please let me prepare for the duel. Okay. Alright, so... Thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder. Alright. Um, it's been a little bit. I want to take a look at the electric cards. Most of them are weak to the fighting type. More so than anything else. Yeah, so I'm gonna want something that'll hit Zapdos. Um, so I don't want all fighting. But... 
Yeah, I'm definitely going to want to change up my deck. Okay, thank goodness we can actually do that, because that's... If I had to go up Thunder Steve with this ridiculous water deck, we'd get absolutely fried. Okay. So, there go all of our water energies, or our water types. We're still going to want to have our Scizor... Not Scizor. Uh, I've played a little bit, or thinking a little bit too much about team building for the NCPL. Um... Okay, we have our fighting types in here. We have our Hitmonchan and our Hitmonlee. We're going to want as many of those as possible, to be honest. Hitmonlee is really good. I want another Hitmonchan, but who knows. We'll have a couple Rhyhorns and a Rhydon. Um, Aerodactyl is not all that great, to be honest, in my opinion. What else do we really like? Machop. I really like Machop because it can, you know, just surefire attack right away. Machoke is really good. I'll probably throw a couple of those. Oh, can I not? Oh, I don't only have one Machoke. I only have one Machoke. Interesting. Mankey, Scratch, eh, Primeape. Primeape's so-so, in my opinion. Sandshrew and Sandslash, though. Sand Attack, in particular, is pretty good because it helps you set up with other Pokemon. Do I want to throw more Tauros in here or something? I'll probably throw another Tauros in here, just because... And maybe Intratini and Dragonair, simply because... I don't want to, um, actually, what resists the lightning? Actually, a lot of the fighting types resist the lightning and lightning type. And that's mostly because I don't want to, what was I even saying before? I don't have as many, like, fighting types as I did water types before, but I don't want to rely too much on that particular typing, and I think that's because he might have a lot of Zapdoses, so. All right, let's throw a bunch of fighting energies in here. I've got 12 fighting Pokemon. I'm probably going to want to have, I don't know, 18 fighting energies. I literally just have fighting and colorless, so I really only need fighting energies at this point. So 21 fighting energies and then a bunch of double colorless. Honestly, I think that's fine. Honestly, I think that's fine. Yeah, let's, um, let's give that a go. Okay, is your deck ready, Nick? Prepare for the duel? No, we are not going to prepare for the duel. We are going to battle Thunder Steve. All right then, let's begin the duel in the next episode. Sorry guys, I really don't know how long these duels are going to go. I don't know if they're going to be like the first one against Grandmaster Courtney. So I don't really want this to go on forever. So I hope you guys enjoyed our battle against Grandmaster Courtney. It was a bit of a, it was a bit of a sweep. It was a bit of a, a blowout in my opinion. But I hope you guys at least enjoyed the beginning of this sort of Elite Four and are excited to see where it goes. I, I bet each person is going to get more challenging as we go on. I bet they're going to be based around the legendary birds and then probably Mew or Mewtwo for the last one or something really cool like that. So I, I'm excited for the challenge and I'm excited to get back into this after not having recorded for a bit. <clears throat> and I want to say thanks for all your guys' support on the videos up until now. Um, I've been catching up on them a little bit and I appreciate all of your guys' fun little comments and sharing your bits of your stories, your tidbits about this game and everything. It's been a lot of fun. So thanks a ton and I'll see you guys in the next episode. But until then, this has been Night Zero and this mission is complete.